Hello, there's lots of people on YouTube, social media and the press and people you meet in the pub telling you not to buy an electric car. So let's take a look at some of the facts. Some of the key areas are price, charging speed, public charging, cold weather and battery degradation. I hope you can like and subscribe and please take a look at my other videos. I'm aiming to get 1000 subscribers. I've had a Tesla Model 3 for 22 months after 50 years of driving diesel and petrol. And unlike the people who hate EVs uh, that tell you not to buy one, they're the people that don't own them. I'm not going to tell you whether you should buy an EV or not. I'm just going to let you make up your own mind. Let's start with the price. Yes, it's true. Electric vehicles are dearer than internal combustion engines. But the price of second hand EVs is coming down as more and more people buy new electric vehicles. And also the Chinese invasion has just started and prices will be dropping considerably. Sadly, most legacy automakers only want to build large SUV tanks at ridiculously high prices and uh, they're trying to put people off buying electric vehicles. What do you think? Please leave your comments below. Most people buy a car on credit or lease and I have found although my Tesla Model 3 cost more initially, I'm saving money every week and month on running costs compared to my previous Audi A3 diesel. Charging at home is now less than a quarter the cost of diesel and petrol and my repair bills for servicing are zero and road tax is also zero for the next couple of more years. So charging at Tesla supercharges is half the price of visiting gas stations. And because most of the time I'm charging at home, it means my charging costs are between a quarter and half the price of gas. The people that say that charging and public charges is more expensive than gas drive a very inefficient, big, ugly electric vehicle and go to the most expensive public chargers. Charging speed when I'm at home, I plug in and it charges overnight. There's no rush and it's while I'm watching TV relaxing and I no longer have to go to the gas station and fill up with diesel or petrol. It's great driving past the gas stations. And of course, if you can't charge at home, you need to find a local slower charger that's reasonably priced and encourage your council or workplace to install EV chargers in car parks and roads. Lots of people do have EVs without off-street parking, even in London. So I use Tesla superchargers on longer trips and they're more than fast enough. I get a coffee, stretch my legs and I'm ready to go. I don't have to fully charge but only need enough charge to get to the next point or home or wherever I'm going and the Tesla touchscreen tells me when. If I didn't have a Tesla I'd probably use GridServe but now they're a bit more expensive, but not as expensive as some. Uh, and they don't just put in one or two chargers, but usually eight or more. And they're contentless and usually quite reliable. So TwidServe would be my first choice if I didn't have a Tesla. Now, if I was in Scotland, which have Charge Place Scotland public charging, which is fantastic, it's sensible prices, uh, some slow, some fast and some free and they're in many Scottish car parks and I wish England and Wales was as good as Scotland's EV charging. Well done Scotland. I have a standard range Tesla, uh, not a long range model. Now the range was 263 miles when I got it, now it's 254. So it's gone down a few percent but I'm not worried as the LFP battery will last over 300,000 miles at least longer probably than the actual body of the car. Many of the myths and lies about EVs are from the early days 10 to 15 years ago and the improvements that have been made in range, battery degradation, uh, much better public charging network but it still does need to improve a lot. So the range of my EV is about 207 miles and you know what I'm ready for a stop after 150 miles sometimes less and range anxiety is never a problem because there are Tesla superchargers wherever I go. Uh, even in Europe we've driven down to the Algarve in Portugal and all over the UK and I certainly don't need to drive 600 miles on a full tank, don't need that. 
Now some non-EV drivers will say driving in cold weather is a problem because the effect on the battery. Now we drove to Scotland last December, it was minus one when we left Cornwall. By the time we got to the Scottish Highlands, it was minus 10. But the Tesla Model 3 was fine. It got us to Scotland, the Orkney Islands and back with no range anxiety. So my experiences are with Tesla, but if I didn't have a Tesla, I'd probably buy a Hyundai or an MG and maybe consider a few other options. Whether the price is lease, credit card or cash, I'd look at a similar price Tesla and establish what I'm getting extra from a non-Tesla EV. As the Tesla is so good to drive and the supercharging network gives it a big advantage over all the other makes. And I can never understand those people who paid twice the price of a Tesla that wasn't a Tesla. It makes no sense. It's up to them. It's their life. Obviously, the prices of second-hand depend on your needs and distances and are all different. I was driving a 1,000 miles a week 20 years ago, but now sometimes I only do 20 and then we'll do one or 2,000 miles on a month on a long road trip. Everyone's different. I said at the start, I'm not going to tell you to buy an EV. That's entirely up to you. Personally, I would never go back and I love the driving experience and in driving the car so much. But what do you think? Please leave your comments below. I do hope you can like and subscribe, take a look at my other videos, and please don't forget to take your reusable mug wherever you go. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye.